Did you know that the success of the Air Jordan shoes can be credited to a ban by America's National Basketball Association? Let me explain. Back in 1984, Nike created the Air Jordan 1 shoe line in partnership with Michael Jordan, the legendary basketball player. During that time, the NBA had this uniform policy which stated that a player's shoes must be at least 51% white. And because of this rule, the NBA banned the Air Jordan 1 as it had a red and black dominated design. Despite the ban, Michael Jordan wore the shoe anyway to every single game, attracting a $5,000 fine per game, which translates to about $15,000 fine in today's time. But that did not affect either Michael Jordan or Nike. In fact, Nike embraced this controversy and even paid all of these fines, thereby turning it into a publicity gold mine. This perception of the brand being a rebel and anti-establishment instantly turned the Air Jordan 1 shoe into a cultural phenomenon attracting more than 150 million dollars in sales. Hello brand lovers, my name is Ketan and welcome to a new video on Brand Spree. Nike, formerly known as Nike Inc, is an American sportswear and sports equipment corporation headquartered in Oregon, USA. The Nike brand is the world's largest supplier of athletic shoes and apparel with a revenue of more than 50 billion dollars in the year 2023. In this video, we'll look into the strong brand values, the innovative design practices, and the power of storytelling that Nike has successfully implemented in growing from a humble shoe supplier to a global icon that's known for inspiring millions of individuals and truly winning their hearts. Let's dive straight away into Nike's branding case study and try to answer the question: How did Nike become a global inspiration? Let's get a quick look at Nike's history of innovation before getting into its branding side of things. In 1964, Phil Knight, a track athlete at the University of Oregon, founded a sports shoe distribution company called Blue Ribbon Sports along with his innovative coach Bill Bowerman. With the aim to provide runners with better footwear than what was available, this company started by distributing shoes made by a Japanese shoemaker called Onitsuka Tiger, which is now a multinational Japanese brand called Asics. In 1971, with tensions rising between Onitsuka Tiger and Blue Ribbon Sports, the latter rebranded itself as Nike and started introducing its own branded line of sports shoes into the market. We'll get much deeper into the brand's name and logo design in the brand identity section of this video. In 1974, Nike launched a revolutionary product called the Waffle Trainer, which was responsible for the explosive growth of the company in the initial years. This product was a refined result of the innovative waffle patterned sole design that Bill created back in 1971 when he used his wife's waffle iron on a rubber base to create a new sole for track shoes which would have a much better grip and be lightweight as well so as to increase the runner's speed. In 1979, Nike introduced the air cushioning technology designed by Frank Rudy, an aerospace engineer. The idea was to incorporate flexible urethane pouches filled with pressurized gas inside the shoe sole to provide superior cushioning to the underfoot. This led to a new era in comfort and performance with products like Nike Air Max setting a new standard in the industry. From becoming a leader in the US market in the 1980s to achieving global dominance in the 1990s, Nike had already cemented its position as the world's leading athletic brand by the start of the 21st century. Today, with its strong focus on embracing sustainability and social responsibility, Nike's impact extends far beyond sportswear and fitness, even influencing pop culture and art.
let's begin this section with a few of the interesting business strategies that have made Nike what it is today. Number 1. Product Innovation Nike invests heavily in the research and development of its best performing and comfort first products through its innovative technologies like air cushioning and flywire material. Number 2. Athlete Collaborations Nike works closely with athletes to understand their needs and pain points, ensuring a greater chance of success. Such collaborations with high-profile athletes have even led to popular Nike sub-brands like Air Jordan, created in partnership with Michael Jordan. Number 3. Omni-Channel Strategy Nike seamlessly integrates its online and offline channels, allowing customers to buy products and access services across various platforms. Nike's revenue model truly takes advantage of its innovative business strategies. It has about five sources of revenue. Number 1. D2C Sales, where the brand sells products directly to consumers through its retail stores, online platform and mobile apps. Number 2. Wholesale, where Nike sells its products in bulk to a third-party retailer and third-party stores. Number 3. Limited Edition Sales, where the brand periodically releases limited edition products by collaborating with various designers, artists and brands, generating strong demand and commanding premium prices. Number 4. Licensing, where Nike earns royalty fees by allowing other brands to use its brand name and logos on their own products. Number 5. Subscriptions, where the brand earns a recurring revenue from dedicated customers using its personalized coaching services from the Nike Training Club app, for example. Nike's brand strategy is strongly focused on inspiring and motivating people to achieve their dreams. Its brand mission is to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. And to ensure that everyone in the company is driven by the same goals, Nike promotes its belief in a set of brand values which are diversity and inclusion, responsible sourcing, empowering communities, sustainability, and innovation. When it comes to the portfolio of brands that it owns, Nike primarily follows a monolithic brand architecture with the majority of its products sold under the Nike brand name. To get a better idea at this structure, let's break down Nike's brand portfolio into multiple categories. Number 1. The Core Brand the Nike brand represents the entire range of athletic footwear, apparel and equipment catering to a broad athletic audience. Number 2. Product Brands Nike sells a majority of its products through its own Nike sub-brands or product brands like Nike ACG or All Conditions Gear which is focused on offering specialized gear for outdoor and adventure activities. Nike SB, which caters to skateboarding enthusiasts in particular. Nike Pro, which specifically focuses on providing professional-grade training apparel to athletes and fitness enthusiasts. And Nike Air, which is a product brand of shoes that uses Nike's patented air cushioning technology. This sub-brand even has multiple product lines like the Nike Air Max and Nike Air Force, for example. In addition to these, there are sub-brands with their focus on specific sports like Nike Golf, Nike Yoga, Nike Basketball, and Nike Running, to name a few. Number 3. Digital Platforms The brand also provides various services to customers through a lineup of digital platforms like the Nike app, which is one-stop shop for buying Nike products and also provides personalized product recommendations to the customer. The Nike Training Club NTC app, which is a fitness platform offering various free as well as paid guided workouts and training plans. Nike Run Club or the NRC app, which is a digital platform that offers GPS tracking, guided runs, social connections and challenges to a global community of runners. The Sneakers app which is completely dedicated to sneaker enthusiasts or sneaker heads, providing them access to new product launches and exclusive drops of limited edition sneakers from Nike. 
Number 4. Subsidiary Brands While Nike has sold most of its brand acquisitions, it has two subsidiary brands that it still owns like Converse, which is a lifestyle brand of casual fashion apparel and sneakers and Jordan which is a brand of basketball shoes and apparel that was created in partnership with Michael Jordan the very popular basketball player now when we look at the competitors of Nike many famous brands compete with it in each of its product segments for example while Adidas competes with Nike as a whole Puma competes with it in the lifestyle category with a focus on the younger demographics similarly while Under Armour competes with Nike in performance athletic apparel and footwear Skechers keeps the brand on its toes in casual wear and fitness segments Nike embodies the hero archetype for defining its brand personality. This is a triumphant personality with a strong belief in determination and courage. This is also clearly visible in Nike's advertising and messaging, which usually have a tone of voice that is honest, brave, and motivating. On a side note, if you're finding this video interesting and insightful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and feel free to share this video with your friends. It would really help me out. The classy and minimalistic brand identity of Nike could be considered a great case study in brand storytelling and brand recognition. Initially run as Blue Ribbon Sports, the company changed its name to Nike after the Greek goddess of victory as a way of representing their own aspirations and brand vision. The Nike brand logo is a minimal combination mark consisting of a word mark and a symbol. The word mark Nike is presented in a bold uppercase font with a modern and timeless aesthetic. In addition to that, the word mark is slightly slanted forward to represent the brand's future-oriented thinking and to add a sense of moment to the word mark. The second part of the brand logo is an iconic symbol that perfectly represents the dynamic movement of an athlete in action. This abstract symbol, famously known as the Nike swoosh, has been popular in the design world for its ability to capture the essence of speed, victory, and excellence that Nike is all about. In addition to the Nike logo, Nike's sub-brand Jordan features the famous Jumpman logo, which is actually a silhouette of Michael Jordan, the former NBA player. By the way, did you know that the iconic Nike logo was actually designed by a graphic design student for just $35? Back in 1971, when Blue Ribbon Sports wanted to start its own branded line of sports shoes instead of staying a distributor, the founders decided to rename the brand Nike. During this time, Phil Knight, one of the founders of Nike, happened to be teaching accounting classes at Portland State University. Right when he was looking for a design freelancer, he overheard that a graphic design student was in search of extra funds as she wanted to attend oil painting classes. This student was Caroline Davidson, who was given the logo design freelance work for Nike. Phil Knight offered to pay her about $2 per hour for the 17 and a half hours of work that she put into designing the iconic swoosh logo inspired by the wings of Nike, the Greek goddess of victory. Don't worry, this story has a much happier ending. In 1983, about three years after Nike went public, as a sign of gratitude, Phil Knight invited Davidson to a company event and gifted her a golden swoosh ring with an embedded diamond and 500 shares of Nike stock, which have since been split into 32,000 shares and are now worth $4 million. The brand imagery of Nike is another important visual aspect of the brand that truly stands out. Nike's photography often features real athletes and individuals pushing their limits, emphasizing their dedication, skill, and determination. This authenticity perfectly resonates with the brand's target audience. Though the official brand colors of Nike are black and white, the brand does not shy away from experimenting with different colors, especially in its footwear design. 
Nike's shoe designs often feature innovative materials, patterns, and colorways. The brand owes this performance-driven design brilliance to a legendary footwear designer called Tinker Hatfield, who is popularly known for designing the Air Jordan and Air Max product lines. You can find much more about Tinker Hatfield and about what goes into designing iconic shoes in one of the episodes of the first season of a Netflix documentary series called Abstract, The Art of Design. This is also available on Netflix's official YouTube channel completely for free. Nike's marketing endeavors are a great combination of the brand's empowering value system, its inspiring brand imagery, and its powerful tone of voice. The brand's static posters and social media posts perfectly align with Nike's preference for making the greatest impact using just the right amount of words. Nike's advertising campaigns and TV commercials are great examples of the brand's storytelling brilliance. Here are three of the iconic marketing campaigns that have significantly shaped Nike's brand image. Number 1. Just Do It Campaign This iconic 1988 campaign, having a simple, powerful and one of the most enduring slogans in advertising history, featured various athletes and highlighted their determination and never-give-up attitude. Number 2. Believe in Something Ad featuring Colin Kaepernick This extremely popular controversial ad by Nike featured Colin Kaepernick, the NFL quarterback known for kneeling during the national anthem to protest racial injustice and police brutality. This TV commercial encouraging people to pursue their dreams despite challenges received tons of criticism along with loads of praise and support. Even though its share price dropped, Nike's sales grew significantly and this campaign solidified Nike's image as a brand with a social conscience. Number 3. You Can't Stop Us Campaign Another interesting ad by Nike was released during the COVID-19 pandemic. This advertisement featured an interesting split-screen visual concept showcasing diverse stories of athletes and individuals overcoming their hurdles. This powerful and timely ad resonated deeply with audiences amidst a global pandemic and social unrest. As a way of fostering the brand community, Nike regularly posts blogs and product guides on its website to help customers get the best experience of the Nike products. In addition to that, Nike shares inspiring stories of real athletes and podcasts with trained coaches to help Nike fans stay motivated, healthy, and active. When it comes to Nike's philanthropic initiatives, it runs various community-driven international as well as nation-specific programs to promote the idea of inclusivity and equal opportunity. For example, the brand runs the Nike Community Ambassador program through which the Nike employees from around the world can volunteer as youth coaches in their own local communities. Through Nike's employee giving platform called Give Your Best, the company matches every employee's cash contributions and donates to the cause of their choice. To add to that, the brand actively focuses on many CSR or Corporate Social Responsibility initiatives where it partners with a local company to address a local cause. For example, together with Child Fund Korea and V Meetup Sports, Nike created Active Modu, which offers fun physical activities to kids and provides positive coaching skills to school teachers across Seoul, the capital of South Korea. Similarly, in partnership with the tennis champion Naomi Osaka and Loris Sport for Good, Nike launched Play Academy in Japan's Tokyo and Osaka as an initiative that aims to change every single girl's lives through play and sport. 
through the consistent use of its visual identity, solid brand values, strong storytelling ability, and its multiple brave decisions, Nike has been able to strongly position itself as a brand with a heart. Nike is one of those few brands that can emotionally connect with people and can truly impact people's lives. By the way, did you know about the great shoe spill of 1990 that has become a huge attraction for Nike fans? Back in 1990, there was this bizarre incident where a container ship called Hansa Carrier encountered severe weather conditions causing it to lose a significant number of shipping containers overboard. And about five of these cargo containers contained a total of 61,000 Nike shoes, including a mix of various styles and sizes. A few months later, the first wave of these lost shoes started to appear on the shores of Washington, which became sort of a treasure hunt for servers and beachcombers. Interestingly, the journey of the shoes also helped the oceanographers and scientists get insights into the movements of ocean currents. Despite being an environmental and financial disaster, the lost shoes became sort of a collector's item, adding extra value to Nike's fandom. Alright guys, that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to Brands Pre for more insightful videos on branding and related topics.